Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back on the Ferrari doing a little bit more stuff with windows. All right, so those of you who were watching last week will have seen that I put in some electric windows into the Ferrari, and uh, there are a few comments going with that. Uh, those who missed it, I'll put a link up above, and um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please uh, think about subscribing, hit the, uh, hit the button, it does help us out. With the electric windows, there are only a few comments. Uh, one of the big ones that kept coming up was, um, does the door mechanism still work? And yes, it still works fine. It's actually, uh, uh, it's this black rod here that, that sort of flows in behind where the electric window mechanisms go up and down. Doesn't uh, interfere with the uh, electric, with the, uh, the door uh, mechanism at all. So that's an easy one. Uh, the other thing that uh, I keep getting a few comments about is, um, People are sort of saying, why don't you do all this after it's painted? Like, you know, I'm just gonna have to pull it all apart again, and I am gonna have to pull it apart again. But I made that mistake, um, even on the Datsun, which when, was generally just a restoration. It wasn't really a, uh, too many modifications. The issue is, is that you always end up having to modify it, drill holes, change things. On, and if you're doing that on a painted shell, then you're gonna have to pull it all apart again and, uh, and, and repair bits and repaint bits. And that's not good to do on a uh, painted shell. It's best to get absolutely everything together, running, working, um, while you're in the build phase, in the bare metal phase. So I plan on building this, basically, almost entirely building this car in bare metal, then pulling the whole thing apart and then painting it. So that everything, once it's painted, should just bolt straight back on. I might need to clearance some sort of paint uh, to make some bolts fit and things like that. But basically, it should be pretty much ready to go. That is my uh, my theory. So um, that is the one I'm working towards. Now, um, like I said, you saw me make uh, these electric windows last week. So this week, I thought I'd have a look at these rear quarter glasses. All right, that was a lot of messing around to uh, get this rear quarter glass in, and uh, I am realizing now that it's going to be a lot of fun, not so much fun, trying to put it in when it's all done, painted, and, uh, and all together, because, yeah, all these uh, trims are very tight, and, uh, yeah, getting it in with a fresh new rubber and things like that is, uh, yeah, quite a challenge. But uh, there was a reason for me putting this in, and, one of, and the main reason for that is... Uh, as you can see, this, uh, these windows open up. They, uh, they actually have like a sort of little sort of cam lock type, uh, type setup in the back of this car. And um, these are really handy windows. They actually have them on, my, on Harry, my old 911 as well. And uh, they're really handy on a hot day, particularly in a car like this without air conditioning, where you can open these up at the back without actually opening up all of the front, and it'll draw air through, and you get sort of uh, um, a, a nice flow of air through onto you without actually getting all that wind buffeting on the highway from having your windows down. But the big issue with these windows is that if you want to open them, you sort of, you, you don't realize you need to open them until you're going on the highway and you're like, oh, I should open those windows. But you have to stop, get out, to reach back to be able to open them up. That to me is a little bit too difficult. And that is why I've actually gone and got a couple of these uh, motors. These are actually from um, a US delivered van. I actually bought them secondhand from uh, the US. And these are actually, electric rear window operators for these exact type of windows. Um, I did not come up with this. Uh, actually, I, uh, I stole the idea from my mate Mike, who uh, runs the Wrench YouTube channel. You should go and check it out. He has, he's doing something similar to this on his Blasphemy build, which is an old 911 similar to uh, uh, Harry that he's putting a twin turbo Subaru motor in. So uh, check that out. And thank you, Mike, for this idea. When I saw it, I thought that is absolutely brilliant. Using these things and this electric motor will actually be able to hopefully open and close these windows without me uh, having to get out of my seat. So let's have a look at this now and see if I can actually fit these to the car and get them to actually work. All 
All right, so I've been doing a bit of looking around. Now I've got my window installed, working out how I'm going to actually connect this motor up to the existing sort of mounting point for the glass. So uh, the way it was mounted before, it's got a, uh, a little circlip that goes in behind uh, this little piece here, and this little piece sticks on through the glass with a circlip. So I need to join this piece up to this little ball tab receptacle on the uh, the motor itself. So I went over to the old dead Audi I've got over there that's uh, donated its engine to the Rockster and uh, I took the um, the little ball mount for the gas strap for the bonnet. Um, that is the perfectly right size for this um, this receptacle here. So that's a uh, the first win. So now I need to have a way to mount the uh, the little ball to this. Now um, it's actually, when this motor is sitting in here, it's about 20 mil shy of where it needs to be. So I need to build a bracket up to go from, from this to this. So, um, or probably like that. So uh, I will start seeing what I can do about making these things join together. All right, and a bit of work, and there we go. So you can see I've bolted through here. This little fitting on the bottom, this is the fitting that originally fits onto the window. And then I've just made this little bracket going across with a uh, welded in captive nut that I can bolt on. Uh, this is a floating cap on this side. So um, the weld is on the other side, it bolts through and this holds it all together. So this now should hopefully be the bracket I need to connect this up to the uh, electric window motors and let's see how it works. I've got it to work, but the issue I have at the moment is that the window is, uh, is not the most secure. Uh, there's no actual bolting point for the hinges at the front. By the look of things, there's a chrome strip on the front edge of this window that just sort of locks into this chrome trim top and bottom. At the moment it's locked in at the bottom, but it's not locked in at the top. So the window is tilting down and the window doesn't want to close properly because it keeps hitting the, uh, the chrome trim at the bottom here. So I'm going to have to undo this trim again, try and move the trim around just enough so that I can latch it in and get it to work. So fiddly. Okay, I've aligned the whole window and everything up again, and it works. I haven't mounted the, uh, the motor in yet, like I'm just holding it by hand, but it actually does what it says on the box. So uh, that is a big win. I think that is gonna be a, uh, a fantastic addition and being able to use them while you're moving down the road is gonna be a big bonus. So next challenge is how am I actually gonna mount the motor to the, uh, the C pillar of the car. Let's see what that's gonna take. It's all mounted up and it's working fantastic. How good is this? How good is that? I can keep doing this all day. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, so you can see now I have it all working, but you can see this top tab here is sitting far too proud and it's got this 
top bolt. Now, these bolts on the bottom, there's one on either side here, are fine if uh, it's using it to help pull the window in, but obviously in the wind, the wind is gonna start pushing the window back in and then no support at the top. That's what this bolt usually did. Um, I can't use this bolt anymore because obviously I'm gonna have to cut it off. So I'm going to have to try and make some sort of arrangement to bolt it in on this top side over here. And I have a bit of a plan for that. All right, so you can see I built this uh, this strap over this far side, which locks in, ties in the top from uh, wanting to push out this way. So that's all locked in. We've got it all mounted up now. So um, I do need to trim out this side a little bit more. As you can see, I've trimmed it a bit. Uh, this top bit here can be trimmed off because that's all just reinforcing and tidied up. I am gonna have to build some sort of cover for this, but the, for the time being, let's move over to the other side and start working on the other one. Okay, and the other motor is mounted up on this side. It was relatively straightforward because uh, I, as you might have seen, I just used the dirty finger paper template to get the same bolting spots as the other motor to match up. Uh, I don't actually have this lower chrome trim piece, so I haven't got it all mounted in properly. And also I can see that this chrome trim on this window is actually stuck in the wrong spot because it actually pivots on the edge of this window by sticking into this little groove. This, the top of that little uh, bit of chrome sticks up into that little slot there and that's what sort of holds the window uh, forward and it pivots on that. So um, either way, I've got it in now and uh, it's working again. Oh. So as you saw, the uh, window fell out and uh, yeah, it's, it's all just sitting in there at the moment but the motor is in the right spot. So I have the motors both mounted up uh, I'm happy with their positions, but obviously these are some big ugly lumps that are sticking out in the back of the car. Now, I need to try and make a way to hide them somewhat. And I have a little bit of a plan for that. So let's see if we can now make a bit of a cover that will cover up these motors so that they don't look too hideous. Uh, and while I'm here, uh, I'm sure heaps of you in the comments are going to be talking about the rust that I have in the back of these quarters. And yes, it's uh, one of these other minor little things I have to finish up near the end. I will make some more repairs with them. They're uh, relatively straightforward. Well, let's make some covers up for these motors though.
right, well, it's uh, getting late, but that's a lot of fabrication later, and I have my two covers all in there ready to go. So, um, so as you can see here, yes, they do sort of stick out a little bit. Uh, yeah, they look a little bit odd in the back, but um, I think the usability of them is gonna be really good. And once uh, everything else is in, I have a parcel shelf, and these will all be trimmed in with the interior leather and stuff like that. Uh, they should look reasonably well hidden when they're done. Um, as I said, not the prettiest thing, but uh, I think usability is going to be great and uh, they should blend in reasonably well later. All right, well, that was a lot of fiddly work to get these things in there, these motors in there and get the, uh, the rear quarter windows uh, opening electrically, but I think it's really worthwhile. I think on a, uh, on a road trip, it's going to pay off big time, particularly on a car, as I said, like this, with no air conditioning. Um, just getting that airflow through without the buffeting of winding the windows down is such a big plus, and uh, not having to pull over and stop to do it is, is a bonus. There are a couple of odd looking bulges now in the, uh, in the pillars, but once it's all trimmed, I don't think it's gonna uh, stand out too much. I think it's just going to be, uh, uh, just sort of blend in and disappear a little bit, which is what I'm after. Um, anyway, that is definitely all the time I have this week, so I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, by 1953, Ferrari had continued to refine its 250 chassis with the unveiling of the 250 MM. These cars were powered by a 3.0-litre Colombo V12 with single overhead cams with a wet sump and a new Modi plate clutch producing 240 horsepower. Two body styles were available with Vinali producing an open barchetta that had three slight body changes over the 12 car run. The majority of the cars were bodied in an innovative closed in Berlinetta style designed by Pininfarina, which brought in a whole new era of automotive design. In total, 18 Pininfarina Berlinettas were built, and these cars raced all over the world, notably seeing success in the United States in the hands of a young driver called Phil Hill, who went on to become the only American-born driver to ever win the Formula One World Championship. All right, well, uh, that was another successful one, uh, at least as far as getting these rear quarter glasses to open and close. I've um, done a bit more research since and noticed that there's actually uh, a lot of different cars that came out with these. Um, I forgot, I actually used to have an E46 BMW that had the uh, opening and closing electrically How can you forget what car you used to have? I remember How I had it. How old are you? But I forgot that they had the function. I forgot that it actually had extra rear window switches when it was a two-door and I was thinking what do these other windows do and I never used them because that car had good air conditioning and stuff it was a long time ago but uh, <laughs> um, and it also comes out on some uh, Lexus Land Cruisers and um, so I think some Ford Expeditions or something like that some of these you know four-wheel drives have these things so there's lots of other uh, ones that uh, have motors available I know these things stand out uh, a lot. I will potentially uh, make some more cover to uh, sort of blend them in when I go to the trimming stage. But the roll cage does hide a lot of it from the driver, from, from the front. You're looking through, you see the roll cage. They're sort of in that same uh, sort of aperture area. So I'm not that concerned about it. But I think the usability is going to be massive. So uh, that is a good point. That's great. We want mm. usability. It does yes. worry me though when you say you're not concerned about it because... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. If you, um, yeah, it's worth doing. It's worth doing to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Um, please like and subscribe if you have it. If you want to see Jeff a day earlier without any ads, you can follow him on Patreon and yeah, let him know what you think. Cause he likes reading your comments. Yep. <laughs> he makes this little noise. He goes. Ah, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one. Colombo V12 with two single overhead cams, oh my god, with single overhead cams, She's producing 240 horsepower, horsepower, and wet sumps, yes, horsepower. All right, okay. is it innovative or in a, in a, I don't even know how to say that way. Innovative. innovative. The majority of the cars were bodied in an innovative, <sighs> closed in Villanueva style. The cars were bodied in an innovative style by an innovative Villanueva style. No. No. So bodied in an innovative <laughs> taste in <and> the <bonus. laughs>